right, so here's our last one, um, free response question from unit six, and it is a calculator question. Um, this, I'm not sure if I would have you guys uh, do one like this um, on the test, but it, it's not hard to do with a calculator. It is kind of awkward just because this function is kind of complicated. Um, but anyway, we are going to approximate the definite integral from um, 1 to 3 of f of x dx using the midpoint sum. And here are our subintervals, which are kind of random-ish. Okay, so we're going to go from 1 to 3 of f of x dx. Okay, and I'm just going to leave it in terms of f for a minute, and then we'll go back and use the cosine of the square root of x. And so what we would need to do is find f of the midpoint between 1 and 1.6. All right, so to find the midpoint between two values, you add them together and divide by 2. All right, so that's going to be the height of the rectangle. And then the width is going to be the difference between 1 and 1 1.6, which is 0.6. Okay, and then we'll do that for each of these. So... Um, we want to find the midpoint between 1.6 and 2. We add them together and divide by 2. And then we're going to multiply that by the, the distance between 1.6 and 2, which is 0.4. Right, and then one more time, we're going to add 2 and 3 and divide by 2. That one we probably could have done in our head. Um, and then the width of that rectangle would be 1. <clears throat> All right. So now what I'm going to do is going to, I use the calculator to figure out what that value is, and I'm just going to plug it in for x. So it's going to be the cosine of the square root of 1.3, and we're going to multiply that by 0.6. And then the cosine of the square root, we add those together and divide by 2, we get 1.8, and then multiply that by 0.4. All right, and this last one is 2.5. Um, I think it's important though that you do show this work with how you're getting those values because they're, they're going to want to know. All right. And then just plug all of that junk in the calculator. Do make sure anytime you're doing sine, cosine, tangent, whatever on your test, it's you're in radians. Um, I'm not, I honestly don't know, um, what they're going to expect from you. Like I said, you should be able to do that with just a regular easy calculator that adds, subtracts, multiplies, divides, but just in case. All right, so anyway, we could get two different answers. Um, the rounded answer is 0 0.331. The truncated answer is 0 0.330. Okay, the next question is similar, except they're asking us to do the trapezoidal sum. So let's set it up in the same way. <clears throat> All right, so for the trapezoids, you add the two bases together and divide by two. Um, that gives you, you, and then multiply by the width, and that gives you the area of that trapezoid. Um, so you're technically doing f of one plus f of 1.6 and dividing that by two, and then multiply by the width of that trapezoid, which is gonna be 0.6. All right. And then the base bases are f of 1.6 and f of 2 divided by 2 times the width. All right, and then the last one, f of 2 plus f of 3 divided by 2 times the width. <clears throat> So looking at this first one, I am going to go ahead and multiply um, 0.6 by 1 half. And so I know that's going to be 0.3. All right, and then f of 1 is going to be the cosine of the square root of 1. 
and then f of 1.6 is the cosine of the square root of 1.6. Alright, so that's going to be our first <clears throat> um, section. <laughs> Alright, and then we'll do the same thing for the second. Take this one. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and multiply 0.4 by 1 half. All right, and then we have the cosine of the square root of 1.6 plus the cosine of the square root of 2. <clears throat> and then for our last one, I'll multiply 1 times 1 half. And then the cosine of the square root of 2 plus the cosine of the square root of 3. All right, and then you can just type all that in the calculator you're either going to get 0 0.342 or 0 0.341. Now, I, because they are assumingly not having you use a smart calculator to do this, just a regular one, um, I would think they would accept this as your answer. Because without a calculator that does cosine, you can't get that decimal. So don't forget, you can leave your answer super messy unless they, you're told simplify it down, leave it messy. Okay, so for C, it is known that f prime of x is the negative sine of the square root of x over 2 square root of x. And f double prime of x is the sine of the square root of x over 4x square root of x minus cosine of the square root of x over 4x. Um, would a trapezoidal approximation of the integral from 1 to 3 of f of x dx overestimate or underestimate the actual value of that integral? And then we're going to give the reason. So to determine um, the over and under estimations for trapezoidal, you need to know concavity. So for... Um, the right and left Riemann sums, you need to know increasing or decreasing. So let me just review this real quick. Okay, so for right, you just, concavity doesn't matter. Increasing and decreasing matters. So for increasing on a right Riemann sum, that means the right corner touches Um, so increasing is over. And then if it's decreasing, the right corner touches. That's going to be under. And then for left Riemann sums, if we have increasing, the left touches, that's going to be under. All right, and then it, I've been doing concave up on all of these. It, it doesn't matter for left and right, so we could do concave down. And then left is touching. That's going to be over. All right. And then for trapezoid, the only thing that matters is concavity. So if we have concavity up increasing or decreasing, and we're going to do a trapezoidal approximation, concave up is over. Concave down is under. Alright, so they give you both 
the first and second derivative. If it had asked left or right, you would need to make sure you use the first derivative. But because it's asking trapezoidal, the only one that matters is the second derivative. And so you just need to know if the if um, in this region from one to three, if the, the second derivative is positive or negative, then you can do that. In this case, by looking at the graph, and if you all look at the graph, the second derivative is greater than zero for all the x's between one and three, which is what we're looking at on the interval or integral. Therefore, the graph of f is concave up. And then concave up, we just saw uh, a trapezoidal sum is an overestimate. And you would need to use those words. You just draw in the picture is not going to be enough. You need to say f is concave up and that the trapezoidal sum is an overestimate. Okay, and then this last one. Um, they're wanting us to do the limit rule for a right ring on sum for this integral. So it's kind of the opposite of what we did on that first one where it gave you the sum and we went back to the integral. This time we have the integral <clears throat> and we want to write the sum. So the integral from one to three of f of x dx is gonna equal the limit <clears throat> as n approaches infinity of the summation from k equals 1 to n of f of, all right? And then in the first thing in the parentheses is going to be your lower limit, which is 1. All right, and then you're going to have the change in x, delta x over, <clears throat> or just delta x. So to figure out delta x, remember we subtract your limits and then divide by, um, the total number of intervals, which in this case is going to be n. So that's going to be 2n times k. And then don't forget, you do have to multiply by that delta x again. Oops. All right, and then we, because we have a, like a algebraic representation of f, we are going to go ahead and fill this in for x. So it's going to be the cosine of the square root of 1 plus 2k over n. And then we're going to multiply that by 2 over n. Now you guys were really good at that when we learned it, so I'm hoping it's all kind of come back to you. All right, one more unit of practices to go, unit seven, and then I'm gonna give you guys some where it's, it's not just one unit that you use, it's a combination of all the different units. And we've kind of done that throughout these.